Today we're talking about why we should fast. Some of you might be saying, oh great. Oh, something I gotta give up. We got that pulled up, right? Yes. Look at that plate. It's, it would be empty without the words there, right, wouldn't it? As, just as a show of hands, and be honest, have you ever fasted before? Okay. Man, that's, that's a lot more than I was expecting. So you know what it's like then. All right? Now, uh, here, let's try this again, all right? If you raised your hand the first time, I expect you'll raise your hand the second time, okay? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> How many have fasted for one day? Keep your hands up. Two days. Three. Four. Five. Six. Wow. Okay, everybody's hands are down. All right. Well, believe it or not, there is a fast that you can do that lasts more than three days, more than four, more than five, more than six. And you don't have to worry about not eating. You can eat. It's called the Daniel Fast. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But let me just first say, that fasting from no food may not be for everyone due to physical conditions that uh, hinder you from abstaining from no food. However, like I was just saying, there are some alternative alternatives that we will get into, but fasting is a lost art in Christianity. Uh, nobody really likes having to give up food. And if you're a foodie like me, that's a tough one. That's a tough ask. Nevertheless, it requires a little bit more commitment, a little bit more restraint and resolve, but it brings a better reward for your efforts. I want you all to listen just to this quick definition of what fasting may be. We may not all fully understand what fasting is, but it's to abstain from food, to eat very little, especially as a religious discipline, and then it's a period of such abstention or self-denial. Now that word self-denial is one of the main intentions of fasting, denying your natural need for eating. And it is for the specific purpose to get close to God. Amen? Amen. It is for the specific purpose to enhance whatever prayers you may be praying. That self-denial is the exact thing what Jesus told us to do. Listen to this. Jesus says in Luke 9, 23, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Take up your cross daily. I like how he says that. Because just like we talked about with communion, this is his trophy. Amen? It becomes our trophy too. Take up your cross daily. Deny yourself daily and one of the best ways for us to do that is fasting believe it or not one of the best ways to do that is to fast yes it's hard but it's meant to be hard amen it's meant to be a little hard at least but we're going to talk about different lengths of fasting we're going to talk about a little bit different ways and 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 how and why you can fast and some reasons, all right? First, we're going to go over some lengths right now. I believe that we can fast anywhere from 1, 3, 7, 21, and even 40. But only if God leads you to do that. I would never suggest you just say, I'm going to go 
go 40 days. Because yes, there could be some serious health problems that could be associated with that. And unless God leads you to do it directly, I wouldn't do it. Don't ever just take that on yourself. But there are some other ones that we could do and even go the distance on. And we'll talk about those here in a second. But did you know that Jesus fasted? The perfect, sinless, spotless lamb of the world fasted. Now, why would he need to fast? He's already perfect. I can understand why he tells us we need to fast, right? But Jesus fasted? He even saw the importance of denying the flesh, even though he was already perfect. Even though he had never done any sins, he even saw the need for fasting. And not only that, but he goes the distance, folks. He sets the bar so high that we can't even reach it unless God tells us directly to do it. Matthew 4.2 And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. I bet. Yeah, yeah. Right? right? We sit in church and pastor runs too long. Man, I'm starving to death. Come on, let us get out of here. I got to go eat lunch. And there's Jesus sitting out in the desert by himself for 40 days and 40 nights, not eating a morsel. And, you know, out in the desert, I can even imagine that his water supply wasn't as easily readily available either. Yet he goes all the way 40 days. And he's perfect. So how much even more of us imperfect individuals should we fast? Amen? Amen. Amen. How much more should we deny ourselves? I don't know about you, but anything that I want, I try to get. All right, as far as food's concerned. There's other things that are out of reach. But if I'm feeling like a hamburger today for lunch, more than likely I'm going to go get me a hamburger, right? We have that access to food. You know, whatever you want, if you really want it bad enough, you can go get it. But the intention of fasting is to deny that self, that want that you have. I don't, okay, I'm not going to eat today because I want to pray for something important. Amen? And sometimes we might need to do that, go that extra mile to get God's attention. Daniel 10.3. Now this is one we all can do, folks. All of us can do this one. Daniel says, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Three weeks, 21 days, right? A Daniel fast we all can do. No pleasant food. All right, that's basically no delicacies, no ice cream, no cakes and pies, no chips, no snackies, all that kind of stuff, and then no meat of any kind. All right, I'd also say no coffee, no sweet tea, no sodas, things like that, that we really enjoy, that we really like. So it's at the bare minimum. You can eat, but just not all the things that you normally like to eat. I've only done this one time, but I gotta say it was pretty enjoyable for the sense that I thought I kept thinking back any time that it ever got hard, I kept thinking. Jesus went 40 days with no food, and I'm over here eating, right? I'm eating bread, I'm eating vegetables, I'm eating fruit, things like that. And and man, Rindy, she really could cook some some dishes, you know. If I ever needed to be a vegetarian or whatever, I I would be thankful that I had her as my cook, you know? (laughs) But nevertheless, it's doable. So if you for some reason have some kind of physical uh, disability where you're not able to abstain from food at all, you can do a Daniel fast, all right? Because you can get protein, you can get all the nutrients your body needs from all the things God already provides us. Amen? From your fruits, your vegetables, all of that, your grains, your nuts, you can get everything that you naturally need and not have to worry about getting sick and dying or anything like that. And you can, we can all do a Daniel fast. Alright? 
Some of you are saying, yeah, but 20 more days, golly. The hardest part, believe it or not, for me during that Daniel fast was the meat and the ice cream. Everything else I had pretty much licked, but those two things kept bouncing around in my mind over and over. Ice cream and meat, you know? And especially if I saw somebody eating meat or eating ice cream, I was like, oh, man. Let me look over here at this wall, you know? That, it, it, it is hard in its own right, all right? But it's not quite as bad as not eating anything. But I do want to encourage you that if you really need help with something, that you consider fasting because it will increase. And as we go through this whole study, it, you'll see that it increases the, the potency of any prayers that you're praying. And it's worthwhile that you do this. Amen? Amen. 1 Samuel 31, 11 through 13. Now when the inhabitants of Jebish and Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and traveled all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan. And they came to Jebish and burned them there. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh and fasted seven days. All right, so here we got, we got a 40, a 21, and a seven. All right, now Saul and his sons had just been killed and they were mourning their death, so they fasted for seven days. All right, so you can go 40 day, a 21, or seven. All right. Now, I would suggest if you're fasting from no food, don't go anything past seven. I've never even done a seven. The only time I've ever fasted uh, for a long period of time was three days. Yeah. All right? And I felt like I wasn't going to die or anything. I didn't feel too sick and I didn't feel too weak, you know, woozy or anything like that. So I think if you're going to try a fast and you've never done it, start with one. See how you feel, all right? You can even do from a morning to an evening kind of a deal. Like you don't eat anything for uh, breakfast or lunch, but you do have a supper. You know what I mean? So you're not completely without food the whole day. So that's an option as well. Here we go. Let's go check this one out as well. Esther 4.16 Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So they're fasting for a specific purpose that uh, Esther could go before the king and talk to him. And back in the day, there were some very legal things where she was just not able to do that. And if you read the book of Esther, you can see that. But we're going to focus here on the three days. You can fast for three days, all right? Here's another one, Judges 20 and 26. Then all the children of Israel, that is, all the people, went up and came to the house of God and wept. They sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. So they fasted for the day, but at evening they were able to eat. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. So here we go. We've got a whole spectrum of days that we could fast. 40, 21, 7, 3, or 1. All right? Now you go with what you feel good with. If you've already gone the distance before, well then doing another three day ain't going to hurt you. Right? You already know your body can handle it. But if you're coming into this and you've never done it before, start out small. Start out slow. And, and then if you're like, oh man, I, I really, I feel sick. I feel like I can't. Don't, don't do that. Try the Daniel fast. Amen? Try the Daniel fast. All right, now let's talk about some specific ways. Typically, a full-blown fast is no food. And you drink nothing but water, okay? So you can't have sweet tea, can't have Cokes, can't have all those tasty drinks, can't even have coffee. Some of you are going, oh, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> not doing that one, right? Right. 
I was telling Nana about uh, the Daniel fast that I was doing, and can't have coffee in that one either. And she was like, "Oh, that's a deal breaker right there." <laughs> <laughs> coffee. No coffee. Wow. Talk about denying yourself, right? Right. Because sometimes if you have drank coffee so much, if you go without it, you get these headaches, don't you? Yep. Yeah. It's so your body's like going into withdrawals. It might be good for you to fast that because you have this addiction. You know, it's not like drugs or anything, but it almost kind of is because you're addicted to it. And if you stop it for a little while, your body's saying, hey, give me that caffeine, yeah. right? right. And for the first, whenever I did my Daniel fast for the first day, it was like, ooh, kind of hurting here. But then as the days went on, I, it didn't happen anymore. Like for it was good. It was, it was like, man, I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I'm, it's good to break yourself from any addictions. Right. Let me just say this as a side note. If you have an addiction to anything, it's good to go ahead and break that addiction. Whether it's watching TV, playing games, doing whatever it is, if you have an addiction to it, it's good to break that. Because I don't want to be addicted to anything but him. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be addicted to any, I don't want to be held in bondage to anything. And, and as a pattern of self-denial, that's what we need to put into practice for every aspect of our life. If you have an addiction to anything, break that addiction. Go without it for a little while. And that can be your fast. All right? You can fast other things than just food and water. All right? But like I said, there are some variations that can accommodate uh, those who have diff uh, different physical impairments, one of which is the modern day enjoyments that we have. Like I was saying, you know, watching movies, TV shows, or whatever. Uh, playing with our phones can be an addiction, right? You can be on that phone 24-7, you know, on Facebook, just watching videos over and over, and that can become an addiction to you. Being on the computer, games, things of that nature, even social engagements, and then also I was telling you about the Daniel fast as well. So there are some ways that we can fast without abstaining from food completely, all right? So here, just as a refresher again, Daniel 10, 3, I ate no pleasant food, nor meat or wine came into my mouth. So we all can do the Daniel fast, right? You may not want to do the Daniel fast, but we all can do. And as I would say, if you are going to do the Daniel fast, try to incorporate those other things as well. No movies, no playing on your phone the whole time, you know. If you're going to use your phone, use it to call somebody, use it for things like that, but don't just use it just hanging out, playing, or whatever, you know. All right, here's, a, here's another one. A way that we can fast. Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. Oh, look at me. Oh, 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 look at me. I'm fasting. Look what I'm doing for God. It's hurting so bad. Don't be like that. Don't try to draw attention to yourself. And if other people notice you're having a hard time, say, I'm all right, you know, I'm good. Try to avert that. Try to divert, you know. Try not to... Let all eyes be on you, if at all possible. It says, For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. You know, they're putting on a good show here. I don't want you to know I'm fasting. All right? Try to be discreet about it, is what he's trying to say. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. They have their reward in the pity that they're getting from others. But you, when you fast, anoint your head with oil and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in, sec in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So He's letting you know right here that fasting has a reward associated with it. When you go that extra mile, He's going to reward you for it. Now that's incentive right there, isn't it? Right. There might be some things that we've all prayed for, but we didn't really go the extra mile. We didn't really see something happen. 
We didn't really see that prayer answered. Maybe God is waiting for us to step a little bit further out of that boat and put our foot on that water. Maybe He's waiting for us to take that next step. Have a little bit more faith. Put a little extra behind it. Because I tell you, when you're fasting and your prayers and you're studying, and, and I want to also say this, when you're fasting, study more, pray more, praise more. And try to serve God more. And then your prayers as you're fasting are enhanced. Amen? Amen. And you will notice. You will notice there's a difference. And you have a little bit more fervency in your prayers as well. It's like the Spirit is energized. Anybody want a little extra energy when you're praying? Oh, yeah. Your Spirit becomes energized as your body is decreasing. Amen? As you feel a little malnourished... Oh, I'm groaning here. My stomach's hurting a little bit. It's like your spirit becomes alive. All right? Imagine as we die, our bodies become, um, our bodies die and they're, they're lifeless, but our spirits are at full potential now. Amen? Amen? Because the spirit is who we really are. So as we decrease the body, the spirit becomes more enhanced and we get more in tune with his spirit. Amen. Make sense? Yes. That's why we got to do it. You want to get a little bit more closer to God? You desire to be close to Him? Fast. He put it there for a reason, and He will reward you for it. As long as you're not going, Ooh. look at me. Well, there's your reward in that. Now, I understand there is, it's hard for me to fast. Let me just tell you. Because i got to let several people know ahead of time that I'm doing it. Because they are on it. My mama, my, my nana, my, my, my wife. If I'm not eating, they're like, what's wrong with you? What's going on? Oh, yeah. So i got to let them know ahead. Of, look, I'm going to be fasting, all right? And it's not because I'm trying to let it, like, look at me, I'm fast. It's because just get it out of the way. Look, you're going to be on my case about I'm fasting, all right? Just leave me alone. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. All right. Now, if you don't have anybody in your house, you're 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 good to go. But don't come to church like this. Oh. <laughs> What's wrong? Well, I'm fasting. <laughs> don't do that. You're gonna ruin the whole thing. You might as well just eat you something. Don't do that. When you fast, don't let other people know to the best of your ability, unless you're me. You know, you gotta let some people know. All right. All right, here we go. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Now, this is just for married couples. If you're fasting, one of the ways that you can fast is from sexual relations, and we're all adults here. Uh, you fat, you're fasting from sex, that enjoyment that we get from that, so that you can be more connected to God in prayer. I mean, that's another way that we can deny ourselves, Amen. right? That sexual desire. You can fast that as well. Now, wives, that's not, you know, hey, I'm fasting this week every single week. All right? I mean, that, that's not, he says, don't do that except with consent because the devil will use that to tempt. Yeah. Right. Right. So we're not trying to give the devil a, 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 you know, a trump card on us to get us and tempt us. You know, because you know, we're all sexual beings. You know? I mean, at some point in our life, you know, we have that desire. And if the devil can use that to tempt you away from your wife, don't give that devil that place. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wives, if you get mad at your husband, let me just say this. Wives, don't get mad at your husbands and hold that as a thing to say, oh, well, we ain't, you know, ain't going to do that. Because the devil will say, good, because now I can tempt them. Yep. Right? And men don't do that likewise with your wives. I don't see that happening, but, you know, that's, you know, it could happen. All right, let's move on from there. Joel 1, verse 14. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. 
Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Another way that we can fast is together. Now isn't that something? We're all fasting together. Now we got to let each other know on this. All right. Now we're not really having to keep it a secret, but we're all fasting together for a specific purpose. Now I'm not saying we're going to do it this Sunday, but we might do this coming up. Now you don't have to take part in it if you don't want to, but I do feel like God is letting in a, us in on this that we need to do this together. All right? We're going to do a one-day fast this time. And I'm not saying we're not doing it starting this Sunday, but sometime soon, so be prepared, folks. We're going to do this together. Amen? Amen. We're going to do this together. And we're going to come together and have a, a prayer meeting about the things that we really need to pray for, and we're going to be in this thing together. Amen? Amen. We're going to call and consecrate a fast together and we're going to call each other together and we're going to be in this together and pray for some specific things. And I know you've already got some stuff, right? Because I do too. And talk about powerful if we're all fasting and all praying and agreeing about the same thing. Man, I, I just feel like God's going to do something with this. Amen? Amen. And I'm not going to make anybody do anything. If you, if, but also, if you want to fast and just do the Daniel fast while we're doing the other, you can do that. And fast, fasting other niceties like watching TV and all that stuff, you can do that too. All right? But as many of us can and feel good about doing that, please be a part of it. Because the more of us that are in, interlinked in this, I believe the more potency will be there. All right? All right. Now let's talk about some reasons why we fast, okay? We're going to talk about some reasons why. First, we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way. Fasting to get rid of, rid of demons. Mark 9, 25 through 29. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead. So that the many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Sometimes there's going to be demons in folks. Do we see that on a regular basis? No. But is it still out there? Oh, yeah. yes. yes. There may have been times where you've come in contact with folks who have a demon and you didn't even know it. And you may come in contact with folks that you say, ooh, something's a little different with this one. Oh, yeah. And you may not have known it. And then other times you did know. Yeah. This person's got a demon in And you may pray for folks and you may try to get a demon out and it's just so deep inside of that person that they're not going to come out. That demon ain't coming out. And then you got to go the extra mile of fasting to help get this demon out. Now, this is not a common thing that we deal with on a regular basis, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Nevertheless, it's still out there, and I want you to always think about that. It's still out there, and demons are real, folks. Oh, yeah. We don't see them, but they're out there. And it's not for us to be scared, because his power is greater than the power of the devil. Amen? Amen. And the power that he uses in us the devil can't touch it because it's God's power. Thank you, Lord. Here's another reason why we fast, though, because of sin. You may have done something really wrong, and instead of just saying, God, I'm sorry, you want to go a step further and fast because of this. Look, my, set, my, my skin, my flesh got me into this problem, and I'm going to go to the Spirit to get me out. 
Amen. Amen. I'm going to deny myself because I myself got me into some trouble here. I shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to fast because of it. Kind of a way of making more of a, an apology, right? Because it's easy to say, I'm sorry. Hey, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Move on. But when you fast, it's like, hey, man, I know I messed up, right? 1 Samuel 7, 3 through 6. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel, saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtoreths from among you, these idols and uh, places of sacrifice, and you prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve Him only, and He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the Baals and the Ashtoreths and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together to Mizpah, drew water, and poured it out before the Lord. And they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. All right. So they all fasted and said, look, we have sinned. There might come a point in time where you mess up, make a big mistake or whatever, and you have this big guilt associated with it. You know you made a mistake. Fast. Let God see you're really sorry and come back to Him and serve Him the way that He's called you to. Amen? Amen. Then here's another one. Fasting for healing. This is going to be quite long, but I'm going to get through it. 2 Samuel 12, 13 through 23. So David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Now, let me just stop right here. You might remember throughout the Bible that there was a time when David looked upon Bathsheba and lusted and made her his wife and had her husband killed in war. He was the king and he was able to do that. God did not like that. Even though the Bible says that David was a friend of God and, and, and David really loved God with all his heart, he still made a big mistake. He sinned. Yeah. So that's what we're picking up right here. It says, So David said to Nathan, who was a prophet, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Meaning, he's not going to hold it against him. But, however... Because by this deed you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed to his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So that the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the ground. But he would not, nor did he eat food with them. Then on the seventh day, there we go, he was fasting seven days, it came to pass that the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him, and he would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm, may, you know, kill the messengers, as it were. When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and when he requested they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive, and when the child died, you arose and ate food. And he said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Meaning God took him to heaven and he's going to return to him. He's going to see his son again one day. 
Sometimes the answer's no, folks, and we have to get that in our hearts and wrap that around our heads. That sometimes the sin that you've done is so grievous that you have to accept the punishment that is associated with that. Amen. And it very well could extend to our loved ones. Yeah. Now, some of us might say, well, that's mean of God to kill that kid. That kid didn't do anything. But do you see where that kid went? He went to heaven. Isn't that the ultimate goal for all of us? Amen? Amen. What if God perceived that because of David's sin one day, that child would grow up to sin just like his dad? And instead of turn to the Lord, continued in sin and went to hell. What if by God's great mercy took that child in when he was of the age of innocence and now he got to be in heaven instead of hell for all eternity? Is it worth it? Yes. Amen. We don't know the full plan. We only perceive with what percent of our brains work with. Yeah. We're little pea brains down here. God knows the full spectrum. He knows what he's doing. And we have to trust that. And David acknowledged that. That's why when he found out his son was dead, he said, well, that's what needed to be then. And he accepted the fate of his son, and he went and worshiped God. And he acknowledged it was because of me that this happened. Not because of you. It was because of me. And we need to take ownership sometimes of our sin. Amen. And not blame others. And not blame God when we get punished for our own mistakes. And say, God, I'm the one. And I'm sorry. And you're still good. Amen. Amen. And I worship you. And I thank you. And I won't take this and learn from it. Instead of sh shifting the blame to somebody else, I'm going to learn from my mistakes. And I'm going to do better. Amen? Amen? Let it be for all of us, Lord. Here's another one. We're getting close to the end. Another reason why we should fast is to ask for help. Amen? So not only can we fast for healing and asking for somebody to be healed, but we can also ask for help in some regards. 2 Chronicles 20, 1 through 4, and then also we'll skip down to verses 14 through 17. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and the others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you and from beyond the sea and from Syria. And they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. And he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judea. So he saw that there was great armies coming against him. And he said, all right, I perceive this threat that's impending. Now let's fast, folks. Let's fast because of this. So he gathered all the people to ask help from the Lord. Amen? We might need to do the same thing for some things going on around our country too. And the other countries and the things of this world, right? Amen. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. Amen? We need to seek the Lord in certain things and areas of our own life. And then verse 14. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, the Levi of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, these armies that are coming. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, 
O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Jehoshaphat the king saw the impending danger, and he said, it's time to fast. So he gathered all the people. He organized a fast for the whole land and said, let's do this. Let's petition for the help of the Lord. And guess what? God answered. Do you see that? God is a rewarder. Those who diligently seek Him, He shall reward you. When you fast, He is a rewarder. Amen? Amen. I love that. Man, we're not using this weapon of fasting as often as we should, are we? We fasted a little bit here and there. I've seen some hands up. But I guarantee you we haven't been fasting like we should. There's some things that we might have should have fasted for when we didn't. And maybe there's some things coming that we're going to need to fast for. Yeah. Keep this in your mind that God will reward you when you go this extra mile. That He will answer you. That your prayers will not fall on deaf ears. Man, that alone right there, man, I need to fast every day. <laughs> I need to fast once a week or something, man. I got, you know, I got some things, right? I got some stuff I'm dealing with. I need to get some fasting in. And God just might answer you. Now, sometimes the answer is no. Always keep that in mind. We saw that David still had to go through what he went through, and his answer did not come in the way he thought it should. We always got to keep that in the back of our minds. But answered prayer. Man, that's what I want. Amen? Here's some more on that. Ezra 8.23 So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and He answered our prayer. We fasted, we entreated our God, we petitioned Him, we called out to Him, and our God did it. He answered the prayer. Here's another one. Acts 10, 30 to 33. So Cornelius said, so we're in, the, we're in the New Testament now. So Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Maybe, maybe it was Jesus, maybe it was an angel, who knows. And said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call Simon here, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging in the house of Simon a tanner by the sea. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent to you immediately and have done well, and you have done well to come. Now therefore we are all present before God before God to hear all things commanded you by God. So Cornelius was at his house. He was praying. He was sending up alms before God. I need help with this. I love you. You're awesome. He was praying hard. He was fasting. And boom, something miraculous happened. I want you to keep that in your mind too. When we're fasting, God just might show up. He might even send an angel. Man, that's something. And he said, guess what? Peter's going to come and tell you some stuff that you need to do. God might send somebody to us to help us and show us what we need to do as well. Amen? Amen. Acts 13, 1-3. Now in the church that was in Antioch, there was a certain prophet and teacher, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. So we had all these different guys. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So out of this group of guys... They were trying to inquire, who should we send on the behalf of the ministry? And the Holy Spirit showed up and said, send Barnabas and Saul. Sometimes we need specific answers to specific problems. And God will, through the Holy Spirit, say, here you go. Here it is. Because you fasted and prayed. Amen? Amen. 
he'll give you that direct answer that you need. Sometimes we need direct answers, don't you know? Sometimes we feel like when we're talking to God, he might give us something vague, but also sometimes he might give us something more clear if we go the extra mile and fast along with our prayer. Amen? Amen. Because he sees and we're... He sees the effort you're putting forth, but also because we're denying ourselves. remember that spirit gets energized? Maybe we can hear a little bit better because we've denied ourselves. Just three more scriptures and we'll close. Just a little bit more in general on fasting. Joel 2 verse 12. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Sometimes we need to get back to God. Sometimes we need to draw closer to Him. We've drifted. It's not that we don't love God anymore. It's just the ways of this world has caused us to drift. As if we're sitting in the ocean. You know how the waves will push you and the current will toss you here and there. Sometimes the current of this world will just kind of drift you away to God. from God. We need to come back to Him and say, Oh! I'm rededicating my life back to you or I'm rededicating my faithfulness back to you or whatever it may be. And a fast can help you do that. Amen? Amen. Let me break this current cycle that I'm in, this drift that I'm in. I want to steer back to you and fasting can get you there faster. Amen? Fast can get you there faster. How about that? 2 Corinthians 11, 27. Now this is talking about the things that Paul and the other uh, apostles and ministers of God were going through. And he mentions, In weariness and toil and sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Now let me just focus on the fastings often part. The hands that went up earlier at the beginning of our study, do you fast often? Or is fasting more of a rarity? Fasting's often. Let me encourage that with you today. That we get our fasting game up and fast often. Not as a rarity, but as out of a habit. Amen? Amen. When we're praying, especially for things that are really important, that we may associate a fast along with that. Whether it's just a one day or a three day, or we may even go a little step further and go a 21 day. Now this, this time that I did do the Daniel fast, I also incorporated the last three days of a no eating as well. And that kind of enhanced that even more. And through the fasting, I felt like God did a few specific things, and it was awesome to see. And God may also do some specific things for you as well. Maybe answer some prayers. And I'm trusting that He will because He is our rewarder. Amen. Amen. Our final scripture today, Matthew 9, 14 and 15. Then the disciples of John came to Him saying, Why do we and all the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken out of the way. Taken away from them. That's Jesus. And then they will fast. And then they will fast. I'm going to leave us on that note. He is intending that since He is out of the way, that we will fast. And He said that there will be some mourning associated with that when He's gone, that we will have a longing for Him? Do you long for your Maker? Do you long for Jesus and to be in His presence? Do you await His return and anticipate His coming? There's Scripture that says, Oh Lord, come. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that way. Oh Lord, come. This place is crazy. There's so much evil. I'm ready for you to come. Amen? Amen. There's a mourning there. There's a waiting. There's a, oh, I need you. When we put that fasting connected with that, man, there's something special associated with it. God intends on us doing that. As we see, Jesus says there at that last scripture, they're going to fast. 
if he says that with uh, a knowing behind that, we need to get up and step our fasting game up. Amen. If he says, oh, they're going to fast when I'm gone. We need to be, oh yeah, I'm going to fast. I'm going to be part of those disciples that fast. I'm going to be part of his people that fast. Whenever something big and important comes, or even if it's not that great and big and important, I'm just going to do it on a regular basis just to have that better connection. Amen? Amen? Amen. Not because I'm trying to get something from him. You know, like he's a genie in the bottle. Never think of God that way. But just because I want my flesh to be a little bit further down and my spirit to be a little bit further up. Amen? Amen. I want to be connected to my God. I want to be able to hear from Him and Him speak to me and it not be like, wah, 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 wah. You all ever see Charlie Brown and his teacher? Wah, 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 wah. I don't want to hear from God that way. I want some direct a conversation with him. I want something direct that I understand and I can intelligibly say that was God. Amen. Amen. I don't have to say, well, was I just thinking that? Or, was I, you know, what's the, huh? I want to say, man, God spoke to me. Amen. And I can't deny that. But we might need to push this flesh down and let that spirit come up. I pray that y'all got something good out of the message today. I pray that you will have a desire to want to fast and it won't be such a huge burden that you just never do but you will take it upon yourself to have a desire man there is going to be something extra associated with me putting in a little extra amen if i go the extra mile don't you know god's going to go even more and at the very base of all of our fasting it is to have a better connection to god and at the very least, that's what we should all be doing it for anyway. But then on top of that, the cherry on top, man, he might do a little something extra too. Wow, what a blessing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that your fasting will not be in vain. And maybe your prayers have been falling on deaf ears. Not that he hasn't heard you, but he was waiting for you to fast. Amen.